What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. I feel like Jay-Z when he made that one song. What did he say? I'm sorry I didn't get right back at y'all. I've been a little busy with this dynasty shit. So, yeah, I've been real busy. I've been meaning to talk about this. Gennady Golovkin versus Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Love it. Now, Bob Arum of Top Rank has stated that he has presented an offer to Chavez Jr. for this particular fight. In this fight, Golovkin would move up north to 168 to meet Chavez Jr. And it would be on HBO pay-per-view July 12th in my state, not my city, but in my state, Los Angeles, at the Forum. And, I mean, what can I say? I think I was one of the first people who have a, like a channel with, you know what I mean, some level of subscribers that was pushing this fight way back when. I told you guys this is a fight that I wanted to see. Most recently, I mentioned it again in December on my segment, Eagles Matchmakers, and I told you I would love this fight, so nothing's changed. I still like the fight, especially since Chavez Jr. was able to get right and extract revenge on the Brian Vera fight, and I feel he lost the first one, but he did exactly what he was supposed to do in the second one. He came back focused, came back in shape, no um, hoopla over weight, and he convincingly beat Brian Vera, so... Kudos to Chavez Jr. for that. And I like this fight for so many reasons. One, because Golovkin is a great fighter. However, and see, some people don't like me because I keep it real. And I call it straight down the middle. I was one of the people who was really pushing Golovkin last January even. Uh, January 2013, I did a video. So this is before the Gabe Rosado fight. I told you this is the guy to watch, Golovkin. He just has this massive power, um, amateur background, and he's a threat. He's a threat to the middleweight division, and I told you guys this. So this is, I have nothing against him. I like Abel Sanchez a lot. Also, I feel he's a very underrated trainer. So that being said, Golovkin, you got to you gotta mix the good with the bad. The good is I think he has the potential, and I think he's very, very hard to beat at middleweight. In fact, I don't see anyone beating him not named Sergio Martinez, and I don't even know if Sergio Martinez can beat him. Recently, Sergio said that Golovkin's not on his level. Level. I'm going to make a separate video about that, but um, that's the only guy at middleweight who I could really see potentially beating him because there's still questions that are unanswered in my mind. The jury's still out on certain, um, I guess, certain subjects on Golovkin. However, that's a big if. Sergio Martinez, we'll have to see how he looks against Cotto and so forth. But I definitely don't see Cotto. I think Cotto's way too small for Golovkin. Anyway, um, Golovkin, he's he's doing exactly what he's supposed to do against the guys. Given his best attributes, like his power and stuff, he's doing exactly what he's supposed to do against the level of competition. And he's doing it impressively. He's, he's taking guys like Ishida, who have never been stopped. And he's disposing of them. But you got to keep in mind, Ishida is a career 154-pounder who moved up in weight. Gabe Rosado's first fight at middleweight was Golovkin. So it shows you that Rosado has balls and, and heart. But I can only give you so much credit for those wins just because, you I mean, these guys haven't even fought at middleweight before. And some people, they get um, caught up with the glamour and the glitz and the hype and and stuff like that. I don't think Golovkin's hype. However, he has to show me something with better competition because it's clear that that the Adamas and you know what I mean, Ashidas, different people can't stand up to your power. So his biggest wins to in my from from my perspective are Curtis Stevens and Matthew Macklin. Those are the biggest wins. Everybody else has just been kind of a stepping stone and an impressive uh, victory, but it's not a it's not the same victory as if he, he he beat someone who's bigger than him or someone who was ranked in the top five etc so as much as i like golovkin i still have to hold out certain reservations until i see him fight even another guy coming up and wait one to fight him edislani laura that would still tell me a lot about golovkin um even though edislani laura would be coming up and wait it would still show me where Golovkin's at like if he just ran through Laura like he wasn't shit then I'd be like whoa like that because Laura is a good Cuban style boxer and if he can cut off the ring like he has been on everybody else 
against someone who's typically crafty, even though he's normally fighting at a little bit lower division, that proves more to me. If you look at the guys that he did bring up, Rosado, Ashida, Ashida has zero punching power. And you could say James Kirkland all you want, but I think, one, I think that fight was stopped prematurely, even though he was knocked down three times or whatever it was. And not to make excuses, but I think Kirkland, a lot of that loss had to do with Kirkland and where his head was. He wasn't with Ann Wolf, and I think he was kind of unstable. So, win is a win. Ashida beat him. Cool. But Ashida doesn't have punching power. I hate to tell you. He doesn't have punching power. He has like 20-something wins with seven KOs. He, I mean, he doesn't have the power at 54, so I knew he had no chance at 160 with Golovkin. And Gabe Rosado, Gabe Rosado, as you've seen with the Charlo brother, he's a good fighter. He's a he has a he's a fighter with heart, and he can make it a difficult night if you don't prepare, as seen in the Quillen fight, as seen in the Jay Leon Love fight. However, he's less of a puzzle than a person like Edis Londi Laurel, who is going to use movement. Gabe Rosado is going to be at you, you know what I mean, and just have that Philly heart, whereas the Edis Lonnie Laura knows a little bit more how to stay out of trouble and buy himself some time. So I really want to see this Chavez Jr. versus Gennady Golovkin fight. There's a video on YouTube of them sparring, and Gennady Golovkin was clearly getting the best of that sparring session. However, one thing I will say, in sparring, I can't I don't know why they were actually sparring, which is one thing. Two Sometimes when you're sparring, you're sparring for different reasons. And a lot of times, like, you got to understand the nature of boxing and boxing being a business. A lot of times you're preparing, one of the fighters is preparing for a training camp for a fight. And I don't know the details. So that being said, Chavez Jr., he wasn't really even throwing many punches. I don't know if he was trying to mimic a certain person's fighting style. For instance, if Pacquiao is fighting Timothy Bradley, someone who's stealthy, crafty, slick mover, then they might pull in a guy like a Terrence Crawford to mimic that. Floyd Mayweather is preparing for Marcus Maidana, so he might get some sparring partners that hit hard, that come straight forward, and um, do the things that Maidana does. So I don't know the details of that sparring session. All I know is the eye test, and it looked like Triple G was bodying him. He was He was releasing this uppercut from hell that was just disgusting and that's with headgear so Chavez Jr. in an actual fight does not want to get caught with that uppercut like he was getting caught with um I'll try to find the video put the link in the description but again sparring is sparring there's been a lot of people Malik Scott from what I heard got the best of Deontay Wilder in sparring I've heard a lot of people who, who did good in, in sparring and then the real pro fight happens and then they get knocked out or whatever the situation is so I mean and it was a couple years ago, so that's not making excuses. That's just all fact. Um, so sparring is different than the actual fight. It could be an indication, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Chavez Jr., another thing that I do like right now is it seems like he's trying to get his mind right. And he wants respect in the boxing world. He wants to be taken as a legit threat and a legit challenge. He still has a way to go. And you want to get out of your father's shadow and out of your father's um, name because obviously your father's namesake has given you opportunities. We'll just say that. So this is a great way to do it. Beat Gennady Golovkin, someone who's feared, someone who's considered avoided, someone with monstrous punching power. We know Chavez Jr. has a chin. Um, and the same works for Gennady Golovkin. He's from Kazakhstan. He wants to be considered an American superstar. He wants to get to that next level. What better way to do than beat someone who hasn't been stopped before and to beat him in a more devastating fashion than maybe Sergio Martinez, like if Golovkin can stop Chavez Jr., who we all know has a chin, and beat someone with that namesake that just holds so much weight in the sport of boxing. Like, oh, shit, you beat a Chavez Jr. Oh, shit, this person beat Mayweather. When you have that, that legacy name, like Chavez Jr., a win over it just becomes amplified because whether you watch boxing hardcore or not, Chavez Jr. is a name that resonates with people. There's My mom knows who Chavez Sr. is. I don't know if she knows about Jr., but she definitely knows who Chavez Sr. is just because of what he's done and given to the sport. So it's a great look for both fighters, a great opportunity. Hopefully, hopefully, 
this year would be great if this fight can happen. Another thing that I like is they both rip to the body. Chavez Jr. is an excellent body puncher as well as Golovkin. Golovkin has great timed body attacks and that's what put Macklin out. And it could be that exciting of a fight. You know what I mean? If, if they're both chopping down the tree and, and ripping to the body. Plus, I want to see how Golovkin looks against someone who's finally bigger than him. We know it's hard to match his punching power. So the equalizer could be fighting someone bigger that we know can take a punch. So there's a lot of different variables, as I mentioned throughout this video, that makes me love this fight. And I hope it goes through. And, and furthermore, I really just don't see Golovkin um, being beat by... I mean, there's you, it's going to take some shit to, to beat him. Unless he has a horrible training camp or the death of his father has him like thrown off or some bullshit. He's going to be hard to beat at middleweight. And I, I mean, this is an intriguing fight because I don't really give many other people a chance to dethrone Golovkin. I don't see Quillen um, beating him. And Quillen's my dude. He already beat Curtis Stevens. Um, you have like Danny Jacobs. Like, I don't, I mean, I don't know. That would be a good fight too. I like that. You have Felix Sturm, Daniel Gill, Martin Murray. There's a couple guys that he could potentially fight, but I think it'll be a tough night for him. One thing I know is you're going to have to be able to take a punch, and we know Chavez can do that. Plus, this could be a big event. This will be bigger than Triple G versus Daniel Gill, even though I don't mind a Daniel Gill fight. This will be bigger than Triple G versus Martin Murray, even though I don't mind a Martin Murray fight. This is a fan-friendly fight. Um... Chavez Jr. called him out post-fight after he beat Brian Vera the right way. And I'm looking forward to it. So until then, enjoy my graphic. Let me know what you guys think. Do you like it? Do you hate it? If so, why? Watch the link in the description, which is their old sparring session. And take it for what you want. As always, hate, comment, or subscribe. Till next video is Ego. Signing off.